everybody, welcome back to the, uh, the Map Deck Workshop. Uh, in today's video, I want to take you through uh, what I take with me out on the ride. I've got my like, two toolkits set up here, which are pretty much my standard go-tos. I've got my little road bike uh, kit here, which is my little, little pouch. I just go put it straight in my back pocket, head out, know that whatever's in there is ready to go. Um, and I've got my little mountain bike kit, which is a bit different because um, you tend to have gloves and you get a bit colder and stuff on a mountain bike. So the stuff in here is is a little bit more robust. So uh, where should we start? Let's start with the uh, road bike kit because I think there's some interesting stuff in here. Um, and yeah, so my big thing about this is like, I just, in my house, I've just kind of got my helmet, my shoes, and this little pouch hung up next to my sunglasses. And it's just there, quick, go for a ride, <coughs> chuck everything in my back pocket, get out the door, get going. I don't want to be thinking about where things are. I hate things hanging off my bike as well. I don't like those saddlebags jiggling around. It just, just wants to be tight quiet and um, and just there ready to go so um, this little cow pouch is actually made out of inner tubes by a company called beer babe um, she's super cool she makes up like recycled inner tubes and does a whole load of new pouches but this one is literally just the right size for um, for putting in the road bike jersey pocket so I'm gonna open this up and show you what I've got um, <laughs> Fiverr um, essential for cake stops um, so first up I, I like to carry gas uh, on my road bike. I run tubeless, but that doesn't really matter. Just two gas canisters and a, and a cylinder. I tend to use one just sort of lightly attached, not piercing the thing, but um, to try and get anything sort of like near the sort of pressure you want in the most road bike tyres, um, you kind of want one of these. Well, I was saying that, I've just changed my tyres and I'm now running about like 60 psi or something, so um, it wouldn't be too that, that hard, but I hate pumping away with those tiny, <laughs> tiny little pumps, like getting nowhere. I know what you're saying, like, well, you've only got two shots. Uh, you probably with these, you've probably got three or four, actually, um, especially if you're running at like 60, 70 PSI to get you home. Um, much more than that, yeah, you're right. It's um, get, get a bit stuck, but then how often do you get those sort of punctures when you're out on a, on a road bike? So this is... <laughs> Touchwood <laughs> hasn't let me down so far. Um, so I'm more than happy just carrying two, two gas canisters on a road bike ride. Um, Favourite little tool for road bikes is uh, this little fabric uh, 16 tool. It's it's not ideal, I have to say. It's it's okay. It does get you out of most of the fix with a uh, on a road bike. You know the the little four and the five mil will adjust the saddle position the way they just rotate your bars and just adjust your position mid ride. Um, probably just about enough to make a little adjustment on the rear mech or um, fix sort of bodge a fix together if you've got a broken something to get you home. The chain tool on it is I think like the absolute bare minimum. Like if you're an experienced mechanic and um, fairly okay with stuff, you'll probably be okay using this. But um, yeah, you've got to have, there's nothing really there to grab hold of. So if you've got a really stiff chain, you've really got to like use a bit of experience and, and, and crank it out. So it's definitely, <coughs> definitely not a tool for everybody, but if you're like pretty experienced with your mechanics and you're happy with stuff, I think you'll probably be fine that this is uh, adequate, I'd say, <laughs> of getting you out of most fixes. It's small, it's lightweight. The thing I really like about it um, is that it just sort of folds folds completely flat, um, like that. So you kind of get this like lovely clean profile and stuff. On a really quick ride, I might even really just take that and the gas canisters. Um, I've got this little tool. I picked this up from somewhere. I can't remember where now. I think it was given to me by like a sales rep or something. Um, I think it's done by a company called Rider who do some tubeless repair kits. And actually, I sort of laughed at it when I first got it, but it's actually really good. Tiny, just about enough of a tire lever just to help you get that 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 little bit off, um, which is which is useful. It's kind of got a valve core in there. Never actually taken that out. Um, it's got a valve core remover, but it also, it's also got these little teeth. So when you're running tubeless tires, what can sometimes happen is that the little little lock ring that holds that um, that valve can get quite tight. Um, so a bit of pushing down with your thumb and undoing it with this, you can normally get a tubeless valve uh, out of your tyre. So um, that's actually a pretty useful tool. Um, da -da -da. Tubalito inner tube, oh, watch it all fall to bits, there we go. So if you've not come across these inner tubes, uh, these are insane. So this is like next to nothing, it weighs nothing for an inner tube. Um, and if you're running tubeless tyres, the only reason you're carrying a, a, a inner tube really is that absolute total emergency that you know you've got a puncture that you can't fix with either a tubeless repair kit or you know just getting some latex in there and reinflating it uh, and this is your only way then 
like I haven't even used it yet since I started going tubeless. I mean, this just sort of sits there and it's still like looking absolutely brand spanking new. Um, but um, but yeah, if you're going to carry a tube, like who the hell wants to be carrying around like a big, you know, big tube? They're a bit expensive, but man, you can spend so much money on your bike saving bits on carbon components when you go and chuck like a, a 250 gram inner tube in your back pocket. So, you know, these are cheap compared to like buying a carbon seat rail saddle or something, you know. So, um, yeah, and it's all, it's all weight on your bike. So, um, yeah, and they're actually really robust, you know. It's not like you're going to put this in and, you know, the first thing you do is going to get a puncture. Once you, these are in, these are bloody brilliant, you know. There's a lot of people that just run these permanently. Uh, a good, good, robust bit of kit. 11-speed uh, chain link, always worth carrying. And a carrier, a little part, set of part patches as well. Like, you can't really repair these two Blipo tools with a part patch. But um, I carry set this for other people, really. If, if you're out on a group ride, it's just it's so light and small. Kind of feel like you, you might as well. So that, that sort of goes on there. And I think that's it. Oh, normally it's like a little uh, zip tie or something, but um, which is always useful. But um, obviously not at the moment. So there we go. That that's like little my little road bike uh, kit, if you like. That's my grab and go kit for heading out on the road bike. And I'll be. I'll be pretty happy up to a five, six hour ride on that. Um, if we're going anywhere really, really adventurous, I might consider putting another inner tube in there. Um, maybe consider a, a, a pump or something as well, since I've got that inner tube, a built air kit and a pump. But, you know, sorry, generally speaking, what can happen in a five to six hour road ride? Cool, let me show you my little mountain bike kit. Uh, I get a bit more geeky about this sort of stuff. So um, I wrap this up uh, at the moment in the Weira uh, kit. Um, no particular reason. It normally, my mountain bike kit normally lives in a little bag. Um, I have like a little hydration pack type thing for my mountain bike. Um, I still like to go light and fast with a mountain bike. I don't like carrying loads and loads of stuff, but what's in here I think is much more useful out on the trails. So I don't know where I started making a, a little kit, but before I go into the tools, let me show you what's in like this little little pouch bit here. So uh, yeah, zip ties. Um, Again, little chain links, um, slightly more robust uh, tire lever. I think this is a toe peak one. It's just sort of, you know, whatever's lying around. I don't tend to like using them too much, but every now and then you kind of need one, especially if your hands are cold or whatever, and uh, you just need something. So just um, so a tubeless repair kit. So all my mountain bikes are tubeless, and you can repair mountain bike tires a whole lot easier. Uh, and this one is li literally primed and ready to go. So you pull this out, and there's like a little little black slug all there already ready to go. So if you do get that puncture and you start seeing your tubeless sealant, you know, pissing out of your rim, quickly grab one of these, it's ready to go, slam it in there, uh, job done. There's also like a little case here full of um, bits and pieces, so that doesn't quite do it. You've kind of got some other bits. It looks like I've used all the, uh, all the bigger ones and just the smaller ones left, but um, they're good to carry as well. It's, um, yeah, man, you can get a lot more success. You don't really use these on the road. I've never had much success on the road. If you are managed to sort of plug, plug the hole up on a road bike, uh, it'll probably get you, I don't know, half hour, an hour down the road, might get you home. But because the road bike tires are slick, they sort of tend to pull out, whereas on a mountain bike, with all the dribbly n the knobs and stuff. So they just seem to work. And I've, I've had tubeless tires that have had this in for months um, and they're still holding, holding there just fine. Um, on my mountain bike, I prefer a much better chain tool. Uh, you're much more likely to break a chain on a mountain bike, I feel, and when you do, you're normally going to be wearing some gloves. Or, uh, where we live is going to be probably quite remote, and you know you want to make sure that your chain tool is actually able to be used. The little multi-tool ones just aren't good enough. So uh, this little park tool one. Uh, Ice tools make another really nice one as well I've been using recently, but um, this sort of sits pretty flat in, in your pack, so it doesn't really stick out at any angles, but it's still, still good enough to, to crank on and get that chain split. So... Um, definitely worth carrying. Um, yeah, and then this uh, this little Weira thing actually, it's been a fairly n recent addition. I used to use the Topic uh, version of this. I like having a good ratchet tool, and this just means that you can actually put a decent amount of effort into some of your bolts. So on mountain bikes, like through axles, for instance, can get really, really seized up and are quite hard to undo. Um, crank bolts and like some of the SRAM stuff, you need a decent sort of a amount of torque on that. Um, 
yeah, like you just you kind of need a sort of a more of a, a tool that you can get hold of, uh, and these just work really well. It looks tiny, like it looks like there's nothing there, but these are just super strong, and they've got like a ratchet mechanism, and you can just, oh, you can just crank on these. Um, so the, the set, I'm not like massively impressed with because I think they can improve it, and I'm sort of going to run through that just in case anyone from Weir actually watches this. But it comes with like this extension, and you can you pop that in there, and then and then a whole range of bits, and like every single bit you could ever want to. So you've got like your uh, your eight mil, which would be great for doing um, those big crank bolts, especially on SRAM stuff. You've got your six mil for pedals and bits and like that. You've got your five and your four, which is pretty much all over your bike. Um, you then got like your little three mils. Two mils great for like um, your dropper post clamps, that sort of thing. Um, you've got your little one mil in there as well, which we'll probably find on like little little adjustments or maybe doing the little um, bolt that undoes your um, disc your disc pads. Um, there's a T25. T25 are literally everywhere on the bike now. Like could be on your seat post clamp. Most commonly, you find them on you know your six bolt rotor, six bolt disc rotors. There's a T10 as well, actually, which I think is really, really quite progressive. So SRAM have started using like these little T10s on the uh, the bolt that removes the brake pads. So that's, that's great to have. And then there's like the little Phillips T2, um, PH2 for doing um, derailleurs. It'd be nice if this was a JIS, but it's it's not. It's, it's Phillips, but it, it's fine. It does the job. So it's like ev everything you'd ever want in there, basically. And when by the time you sort of hook this up to this little tool, it's uh, it's great. You know, you put that in there. There's your eight, eight. So you can really like get in there, and it's it's super strong. Um, and you can do this with gloved hand. You can do it really cold, except for uh, some of the smaller sizes. So once you get down to like your one, your one mil here, you can get this in. And maybe you want to do like an adjustment on the on like the the cable clamp bolt on your um, dropper post or something. Um, but then you like with cold hands, there's not much to sort of grip there. I don't know if you can kind of see that, but like, yeah, it's it's quite hard. So, um, and it kind of gets a bit unwieldy a little bit. When you when you've got gloves on, it's a bit faffy. So what I thought they could do to improve this, because we're actually make a, um, a slightly longer tool bit. So rather than having, ooh, there we go. Um, rather than having these tiny little bits here, is to make it with these longer bits. And provide it with um, this extension instead, so your tool would actually look tool would actually look like that, um, which I think would be a much better solution having these longer bits because then you've kind of got options. Then you can either go really lightweight, leave that at home, and you've just got you know that as your tool, um, which would be superb. That's actually more than enough to be honest you really don't need that long extension for most things um but the nice thing is about these longer tools it's just enough that you can get two or three fingers around them so when those cold hands are there and you're sort of shivering a little bit and the mosquitoes are biting and you know you could actually pull this out and put it away again rather than trying to mess around with these little little things so yeah that's the only thing i'll change it doesn't stop me using it i still think it is um one of the best tools on the market um, for you know trail side repairs on a mountain bike, you know, when you're wearing gloves and it's muddy and it's slippery and it's like bolts are tight and like, <laughs> like, like the only thing that's going to get you out of trouble is this, like this little this little weedy tool, like isn't going to do anything. It, it's like you'll never be able to get into there with something like this. You'll be like trying to turn it and you know this will be getting in the way and like your hands will be cold and you'll be like trying to dig in there and like just no. <laughs> get decent tool plug it all together get some decent amount of torque on there plug it in you know get that bolt undone get it tightened you know there's nothing just get riding again so there you go and the nice thing is this this pouch i know i might change it i might get one of those beer bay ones for now i kind of like it all sitting there it's so something that's always changing and developing but right now everything sort of sits in there goes into my pack Goes inside a little waterproof bag, if I'm honest, to, to keep everything uh, nice and waterproof. Just tucks in. Doesn't need to be anything too too major. And uh, yeah, there we go. That's kind of 
a little like what I what I carry on my bike and to be honest, that's all you need. <laughs> Job done. Right. <laughs> that's enough of me waffling on. Um, let me know what you carry. Uh, I'm always keen to like change and adapt to like what what I do, but uh, so far most of the stuff in here is, has always got me out of the majority of troubles, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hope that was useful. Let me know in the comments below. Okay, see you on the next video.